So here you go. Okay, so those of you who are watching this on YouTube or on Twitch, um, we are trying to build a full stack web dev uh, by you know, cloning a real world application called Clubhouse. Um, and this is uh, session number three for this tutorial series. Uh, the first two sessions can be found on YouTube on the Stack Academic channel. And I'm gonna share that in just a moment. Uh, so you can just go to YouTube and uh, search for Stack Academic. And we have the first two lessons uh, uploaded on, on Stackademic channel. Uh, and uh, we'll have subsequent sessions also uploaded on YouTube. Okay, so I work with this organization called agent.solutions uh, as a developer advocate. And uh, we are collaborating with Stackademic, uh, which is a community of programmers who are learning web dev and JavaScript. Um, we have a lot of uh, programmers and a lot of in really great, awesome teachers who would help you understand programming. So um, this is session number three. And uh, as you can see on the right-hand side, we have the screenshot of this app called Clubhouse, which is an app where you can discover rooms and uh, enter a room to have conversations with people using your voice. So it's a voice-based application, but also has a lot of social features. The last couple of sessions, we looked at how we can design uh, an entity relationship diagram to build various features of this app. Um, so we start right off from the UI, and we look at what kind of data is available in the user, in the user interface. And then we try to um, design an entity relationship diagram. And then we also explored PostgreSQL as our primary data store. Um, we also um, studied the various associations between our tables in Postgres. There's commonly the associations in Postgres uh, or in any relational databases are a one-to-one -one relationship, one-to-many relationships, and even many-to-many -many relationships, right? I gave some of you homework on um, some of the queries that we wrote, okay? So let's take a look at the homework uh, first. Uh, we'll go over the exercises um, and I'll try to tell you how, uh, how we can arrive at those solutions because relational databases can be uh, difficult to understand. Uh, so it's always, you have to sort of practice it and do it for yourself um, to develop a solid understanding. Cool. And um, then we will move on to uh, the rest of the query that will help us in getting the JSON response for the first screen that you see over here, which contains the club name, the room name, the name of the participants in the room, the number of people in the audience, and also the number of people, the participants in the speaker panel, okay? So, um, so the homework uh, lesson is over here on my GitHub repository. Uh, this is the boilerplate code. Uh, if you haven't downloaded this, uh, make sure to clone this repository um, so that you can um, follow along this tutorial and uh, actually get some hands-on coding for yourself as well. And so this is the session two homework. So the question is, in the first, uh, in the second session, we wrote a PostgreSQL query to return an, a, a number of rows, an array of rows that contain information about some rooms, right? 
Um, and each row would contain the room ID, the name of the room, the club name, um, and the number of participants on the speaker list. Cool. Now, the way we did it is using a right join, right? And the question was, can you get the same results, but this time using a left join instead of a right join, right? And uh, we have Dan who actually gave the right answer over here. Uh, Dan's solution is basically this. Uh, it's the same query. We're selecting the, the columns from our respective tables, the ID column from the rooms table, the name column from the rooms table, the club, the name column again from the clubs table. And then we also get the participants from the participant table uh, as a JSON aggregate function, okay? But notice the difference in the query that we wrote in the second session, we selected the names of the columns and then we said we wanna get it from clubs and then we applied a right join on the rooms table, right? Now the question is, can you get the same result using a left join? Yes, you can. You just have to reverse the order of the tables. And that is exactly what Dan has shown us here. In the from a clause, you give the rooms table instead of the clubs table, but then you apply a left join on the clubs table, right? So in the earlier case, it was from clubs, right join rooms but if you want to use a left join you're going to say from rooms in left join clubs and that is indeed the right answer i want to show you why this query works okay so these are some of the most basic postgresql joins okay um if you remember in the previous session we have uh an inner join where we say table A, which is the table on the left, inner join table B on the right. And the result would be those rows, only those rows that match the condition. So it is going to be an intersection, okay? And these, this part of the table and this part of the table that is not an intersection, are omitted, then they're not gonna be part of the result, okay? Now, why did we do a right join? Because in our application, when you see here, we have all different rooms, but it's not necessarily the case that each room is always associated with a club, okay? Um, it may or may not be associated with the club. So that is the reason why we want to apply a right join. So in this case, the green, uh, the left-hand side is the clubs table and the right-hand side is the rooms table, okay? And when we apply a right join, table A, um, right join, table B, right? So clubs, right join, rooms. And then we mention the condition. The condition is basically uh, the club ID column of the rooms table should equal the ID column from the clubs table, right? And we apply this condition, and but we want to include the intersection, the rows that match the condition, but we also want to include the rows from the rooms table that do not match this condition, right? And that is what we did. Now, if we want to apply, uh, we want to get the same results uh, in the left join, we reverse the order. Of, um, so in this case, the left side becomes the rooms table and the right side becomes the clubs table. So in that case, if we, uh, if we apply a left join, we're going to get the rows that match the condition, of course but we'll also get the rows from the left table, namely rooms table that do not match the condition and we'll still get the exact same results. So 
we'll just try this out. So here is my terminal and uh, I am just going to go into my Docker container um, because that's where I'm running my Postgres and I'm going to type in PSQL slash L is going to give me the list of databases that I have. And uh, if I want to switch to the clubhouse database, I'm just going to type in slash C clubhouse. And right now, all my commands is going to apply to the Clubhouse database, okay? Um, so this is the query that we wrote the, uh, in the last session. So I'm just gonna paste this and we'll just have a look at the result. This is the result. We have the ID, the name, the club name, and the number of people in the speaker panel, right? Now let's try to use the solution that um, Dan has provided in his homework submission. So I'm just gonna copy paste this once again here, but except this time, I'm gonna reverse the order of the tables. So here, instead of clubs, I'm gonna say from rooms, okay? And I'm gonna say right join clubs. Right? Um, and I'm gonna say it's a left join. And what did we see in the previous uh, query? We saw we got 12 different rows, okay? And one of the row, the last row is the name of a room which does not, is not associated with any club. That's why the name, the club name column is empty for this room, okay? Now I'm gonna paste the, the query which has the left join and I'm gonna see if I get the exact same results. Yep, we're getting the exact same results, right? Hopefully this makes sense. Now, if you recall what would happen if you, apply an inner join. You don't apply a left join, you don't apply a right join, but you apply an inner join, right? What, would, what does that mean? That means we won't get this row. We're gonna get in total of 11 rows, not 12 rows, because it's going to omit all the other rows that do not match the condition. The condition is, the rooms, the club ID belonging to the rooms table has to match the ID column from the clubs table. If this condition does not match, it's gonna omit all the rows from both tables. So we will see only um, 11 rows, okay? So if I apply an inner join, I should see just, 11 rows, and there you go. So in an inner join, if you notice, the order of the tables don't really matter, right? But in the left join and the right join, the order of the tables do matter, okay? So this was the query that we did. Um, if you notice over here, uh, we have the room start name, that is mapped to this uh, information on the UI. The club name is mapped to the club name over here in the UI. And then we did a JSON aggregate of participants, okay? And that is mapped to this, uh, this section in the UI, right? But it's not complete, okay? We wanna get the participants information, um, specifically those participants that are belonging to the speaker panel, right? Usually that's what we see in, uh, when you open the Clubhouse app. You might also see the names of people that you follow. So those names might also appear over here, but then we're just gonna ignore that for a second and we're just trying to keep, in, keep things simple. Um, so we'll just try to fetch uh, the names of the 
speakers, okay? And finally, we still haven't fetched this information, the name, the, the count of the participants in the audience and the count of participants in the speaker list. So we'll try to extend our query and it's gonna turn out slightly more complicated, but we'll try to get this information as well so that our query becomes complete. Okay, now this particular subquery that you notice over here, it's fetching all the participants, but I don't want to fetch all the participants, only the names of the people in the speaker panel, okay? So I'm gonna apply one more condition over here, okay? I'm gonna say, I'm gonna apply this condition saying, and a second condition, and I'm gonna say, participants dot role has to be in one of these right it has to be a host because hosts are also speakers in clubhouse um, or it has to be a moderator because moderators are also on the speaker panel and finally we have just regular speakers right so if I mention this, then I'm gonna get only those participants that belong to one of these roles, right? So if you take a look, uh, looking back at our schema, what we had in our participants table, this is how our participants table looks like. We have room ID, user ID, and then we have a role, right? Which is of type varkar, but then it we have a constraint. It cannot be just any string, it has to be within these values, right? It has to be a host or a moderator or a speaker or an audience, okay? So if I do this, then I should get only those participants that are from the speaker panel, okay? Now in our case, you might wonder, well, we're just still always seeing the same results. That's because we, um, we don't really have anybody who's joined because we're gonna build the application in the front end as well, okay? So when you actually use the application, you will get a new entry on the participants table. Right now, all we have in our dummy data is just a couple of hosts. So that's why we're just seeing the name of the host because those that's the only participant in the room, right? Okay. Now, it's still incomplete. We still don't have the name of the participant, right? So I want to take a, I want you to think for a moment, what would you do if you had to get the name of the participant as well? And the clue is the, part, the name of the participant is in the user's table. We have to grab the information from the user's table. So what would you do? Take a quick moment to just think. Um, and it's gonna be very similar to what we've been doing all this while, right? So to answer the question, what would you do? We are going to apply an inner join on the user's table. Notice this is our main query right over here, okay? But this is our subquery, right? And in our subquery, also we can apply a join, okay? So the condition that we apply in our join is essentially something like this, okay? This is the only difference. Notice that in the previous query, we had selected participants, uh, user ID, role, etc. We applied a condition. But now we apply one more condition saying that we want to join, we want to apply an inner join to the user's table. Um, and we also have to mention the condition. The condition is the participants table has a column called user ID. Now that column has to be equal to the ID column in the user's table. Right? So if we mention this, 
we will also get the name of the participant okay so let's try that out Yeah, so this is the query that I'm gonna copy paste over there. Okay. Yeah, so if you notice over here, we have all our columns as before. Our panel column is also like before, except that this time we have one extra key, which is the name of the user of the of that specific participant right does that make sense we got this information because we said that the user id from the participants table this is taken from the participants table this user id column has to match with the id column from the users table right it has to be equal right and that is why we get each each participant's user ID and the role mapped correctly with the name column from the user table. Okay. Yeah. It is. It actually gets a lot more complicated, but um, I hope this makes sense uh, to you. Okay. I want to mention one more thing. Notice that I also applied something called limit six, right? The limit six means that I can limit the number of rows returned from a query, okay? Because when you look at the app, you don't see all 190 participants' names listed over here, right? You, you cannot list all the names because sometimes some rooms and clubhouse can have almost like a thousand users a thousand participants so therefore you cannot get all the names right you just want to grab and maybe display a couple of names maybe half a dozen of names perhaps but not not like all of the participant names and that is why it's important to apply a limit okay uh, because otherwise your query can return like really huge information if you don't apply a limit okay values we're actually trying to get an array right this is a json aggregate and therefore it can contain lots of values right it all depends on how many participants are there in the room so we need to apply a limit so we can just supply saying limit six would mean that it would only um limit the number of results to six rows, right? I wanna show you another technique. Now notice that I applied, I'm saying that the participant's role has to be in host, moderator, or a speaker. I can also do this. I can also say not equals to audience, right? because it's essentially the same thing, because there are just four values that we have. Those four values are host, moderator, speaker, and audience, okay? Out of these four values, these three values are all essentially participants that will be there on the speaker list, speaker panel. Only this value, a participant of a role audience, is going to be the person who's going to be just part of the audience. They cannot speak with other participants. They can just listen, okay? So if you're trying to fetch the names of participants belonging to the speaker list, which is this screen, uh, by the way, over here, these names, then we can either say that the role has to be in, we can apply an in query, right the role has to be in one of these values that's when you want to um you want to provide a list of values there are multiple values right but you can easily just apply a not equals as well 
and that will work just as fine. Not equals to um, audience. So let's try this out and see if we are getting the result. Right, we got the result once again. Um, what happens if I say equals? Then that would mean that I'm getting the names of the participants that are actually part of the audience, right? Does that make sense? So if you ever see a feature in Clubhouse in some sense where you have to fetch only the name of the audience, right? The names of the speakers in the name of the participants in the audience list, then you can just say equals because that's just uh, comparing with a single value. So whenever you need to compare with a single value, um, you can just use the equal operator. But if you want to apply, if you want to apply a condition for a range of values for different multiple values, then you can use the in condition. Okay, in or not in. So, as you can see, it didn't give me um, any participant. That's because we don't have any participant yet that is having the role of audience. We don't have any participants part of the audience yet. So that is why the panel is empty, right? If you inserted a participant, that are actually um, part of the audience, you would actually see their name. So we can try this out actually. Let's, uh, let's try to write a query. Uh, so here are these dummy values that I inserted uh, from the last time. Let me just write one more. Okay. Okay, so I just wrote an update query. So I'm just trying to change this particular um, row into an audience just to verify whether we indeed, uh, whether what we just summarized is actually correct. So I'm gonna write this. And now I'm gonna run this query uh, once again. And this time I should actually see the audience. Okay. Yeah, you can see that it returned me um, a participant that is actually part of the audience, right? But if I, that's not what we want actually in the actual app, we just, we want to fetch the name of the participants in the speaker list. But however, if I change it back, to this, then what do you think will happen? Would I see John Wick over here? I won't, right? Yeah, so you can see that we don't see that participant because they were not a part of the speaker list, right? They were part of the audience. Hopefully this all makes sense to you, okay? Huh. So the next thing that we want to do is, now that we fetch the name of the participant from the user, we also want to now retrieve the count, okay? So first we'll get the name, the count of the participants in the speaker panel. So the, the way to do that is by using another aggregation query. It's called count. Count is an aggregate function provided by Postgres, okay? And what we can say is, I wanna count participants, uh, the any column. In this case, I wanna just count the, the number of columns, uh, the number of rows for the column user ID in the participants table, right? And I wanna apply 
a filter, which is something similar to a condition, just like how you apply a where clause over here. Um, in the same way, you can apply similarly a condition, um, but the syntax for it is by mentioning count, followed by the table, the, the column name from the table, and you have to mention the condition inside this filter clause, right? So in the filter clause, I'm gonna say the condition. The condition is the room ID of the participant has to be equal to the ID column from the rooms table, just like before, right? It's, it's exactly like this condition that we wrote over here, right? In the previous query. And I wanna apply the same condition that we spoke about earlier that the role of the participant should not be in audience, implying that they should be a host or a moderator or speaker. Does that make sense? So we'll try this out. So that is something that I've written over here. Okay. So if I paste this value, Okay, so we are seeing the ID, seeing the name, we're seeing the club name, we're seeing the panel, and we're seeing this. When you write a Postgres query, um, the output can sometimes be so wide and so huge that, you know, it sort of comes, uh, it doesn't format it really well. So we can use something like this command. If you type in forward slash X auto, it goes into this mode called expanded display, right? So anytime if a Postgres query is too wide that it can't fit into your screen, it's gonna use something called an expanded display. Um, just a little tip for you. It's okay if you don't use this as well, but it just is helpful for visualizing and looking at the results more uh, in a more organized way, right? So just see what happens if I use expanded display. This is how you look at it. Uh, this is how the results will be formatted if you are using expanded display, okay? So as you can see, we have the ID, uh, the name column, the club name, the panel, and we have the panel count, okay? That's good. I can either say not in audience or I can say in um, host, moderator, and speaker, right? Because remember, we're trying to count, we're trying to fetch the panel count, the, the, the number of participants in the speaker panel. So I can say either not in audience or I can say in host moderator or speaker, right? Now, notice that I also added one extra thing over here, which is called group by, right? And I'm saying group by rooms ID, group by rooms name and club's name together, right? The reason for that is when you use an aggregation query in Postgres, or even in MySQL, um, you have to specify a group. How should the query cluster the result, right? In what sense it should cluster? Because the count, Postgres doesn't know whether the count should be unique for each room or it should be unique for room and the club, right? This count value that we're trying to fetch um, is for these three rows, right? These, these three rows, the room ID, the name, and the club name together has a single count value, right? So we have to mention how, to Postgres, how do we want to group the count when it actually aggregates the rows, right? Because over here in this query alone, Postgres does not know whether the, the number of rows that are, that are returned from here 
are those count values for each just a room name or is it also for the room name and the club name together hopefully that makes sense um, i know it's a little complex to understand uh, group by it took me also a while to wrap my head around it but i can give you some reading material for um, for a more thorough explanation of how group by works but um, in a very basic level uh, you can try to remember it like this. These three rows have a single count value, right? Um, this, this query has to be one single value that is returned for these three rows together, um, these three columns together, excuse me, right? And that is why we need to mention the group by. Okay? We also need to fetch this part, right? This part is actually easier it's actually the count of all the participants, including audience and including speakers, right? Um, so we will have a very similar query for fetching this information as well. And write a similar query, right? You wanna count the user ID column for all the participants from the participants table and the filter in this case is going to be simpler. It's just one condition. That's it. Right? We don't need to apply any other condition, right? Because we're just trying to fetch all the participants right? and taking account of their values. And we can just mention the name of our column, which is going to be participant underscore count. Cool. So if I run this, yep. So I'm getting. Um, Panel count is one and the participant count is also one in this case. That's because we just have one single participant uh, in all of our rooms. And that participant is mostly a, a host. It's, it's always a host. That is why we see, um, yeah, except in this case, remember when we modified our query, um, we changed one of our participants to now be part of the audience. So you can see over here, uh, panel count says zero for this room, right? Um, achieving impossible task because we actually changed one of our participants role from host to audience. So the panel count is zero because there are, there are no speakers yet, but there are participants. Um, the total participant still says one right? Because we still have a participant who is part of the audience. So we have a value of one for participant count and a value of zero for the panel count. Okay. Hmm. So now we will try to go to the next query. This actually is, com our, our query is actually complete in the sense that we are now able to retrieve all the information, right? All of the information that makes up these, uh, the list of rooms in the hallway of Clubhouse, right? The club name, we've retrieved the room name. We also fetch the name of the panel participants. We fetch the count of the panel participants. We also fetched the count of the total participants, right? So our query is complete. Now we'll try to write one more query, except in this case, we want to write a query to fetch all the rooms of the clubs that are followed by the user, okay? This query that we just wrote, it just returns all the rooms, right? It returns all available rooms. But, you know, if you are a user of the app, you won't see exactly the same list of rooms as I would see because the 
you might be following different clubs, right? And therefore, I would be following a different set of clubs and you might be following a different set of clubs. And therefore, you might see uh, a different list of rooms compared to me. So what you would see is essentially the list of rooms of those clubs that you follow. So yours is going to be unique and mine is going to be unique, right? So we're going to try to write another query, okay? Except this time, we will try to fetch the list of rooms followed by a specific user. So here is the query. As usual, uh, we have the exact same fields, uh, room name, um, and we have the club name. Uh, we also fetch the JSON aggregate of participants. This is exactly the same that we did. Uh, you know, we had the not operator. We also fetch the count of the participants, right, um, on the speaker list. And we also fetched the number of participants, the, um, overall, the total number of participants in the room. Okay. Now, what is different? How do you get only the rooms of the clubs that you follow, right? The, the query, the structure stays, stays exactly the same, right? So when I say follow, we have to involve the followers table. And we just have to add one few extra more lines of uh, query to the one that we wrote earlier. So if you notice over here, we're saying left join followers, okay? This entire thing that we wrote earlier is we have to do a left join on the followers table, okay? And we apply a condition saying that the condition is basically club ID on the followers table should be equals to the ID column from the club table, okay? And so that way what happens is we only get, um, we only get the, the rows of those clubs that have followers, okay? And finally, we also want to mention for which user, okay? So we have a where clause over here where it says the user ID uh, should be equal to whatever user you're trying to fetch. So that's this user called Elon. Elon has the ID five. So in this example, we're trying to fetch only the rooms of the clubs that Elon follows, okay? So if you remember, how does our followers table look like? It's like this. Select star from followers. So a followers table is associated with two other tables, right? It has two columns, uh, club ID and the user ID. The user ID is associated with the users table and the club ID is associated with the clubs table, okay? So we apply this condition saying the user ID equals five, okay? We apply the left join on the followers table. Hopefully this makes sense. I know it's a little hard to wrap your head around it, um, which is why I've been trying to go by this process step by step uh, in building this query, but it can still sometimes get complicated to understand. Um, but if you practice for a bit, uh, you will sort of get the hang of it after running, if, if you go back home and try to practice it in your own, you are going to develop some intuition about how these different joins work together, okay? Um, and it's okay if you're not following it 100%, that's fine. Uh, but the key thing to remember is, uh, is to get, is to grab the 
higher level ideas, right? So that you can go home and you can try to replicate them. Okay, so it's okay, perfectly okay if you're finding this difficult. It's not easy at all, right? Uh, I still have trouble figuring this out myself. Okay, but it's okay. Uh, you can go home and practice it, and uh, I promise you, you will develop a better understanding if you do this on your own, right? Um, so let's try to um, write this query. The rooms of the clubs followed by Elon. Okay, right after we make uh, an inner join on the participants table. This stays exactly the same. You're gonna have a couple of extra clauses as well. Right? So one of them is left join followers. Okay. And we apply a condition. Okay. Where do we want to join with the left the followers table? Okay. So the condition is those clubs that actually have followers, right? This condition says that, okay? Just try to run this query. Let's go even step by step. We'll try to run this particular query and see what happens, okay? So, Left join followers on followers table. Perhaps you meant. Ah, oh, okay. It's a type over here. Sorry, just type. Okay. I want to see how many. The rows were returned. Just gonna um, yeah, we still have twelve rows. Okay. So the reason we had twelve rows is because we are still fetching all rows, right? We haven't mentioned a condition, right? So the condition is only those clubs where Elon is a follower, okay? So that is followers.user underscore ID equals five. Um, yeah, this would give us, you know, conditionally return only those rooms, right? So now you can see we just have seven rows, okay? That the reason for that is because, you know, Elon is only following um, three clubs, world governments, video games, and hail our AI overlords, right? He's just following three clubs. And that is the reason why we just have room information for, those clubs. Does that make sense to you? But if you notice over here, what I'm doing is um, I'm also applying this condition, right? All rooms dot club ID is null. The reason for that is um, if you notice one small detail, we don't have the room that didn't have a club. If you remember, we had this room. Um, so when we wrote this query earlier, we got 12 rows and we got this room, right? We also got the room which did not have a club associated with it. And that's missing in the query that we just wrote, right? We wanna include that as well, okay? Um, 
because it's not associated with any club, it makes sense to show that room as well so that other people can join it if they want to, okay? And that is why over here, I'm including this one condition as well, right? Rooms.club ID is null. So it's going to return those rows where this condition is true and also this condition is true. I mean, or it is the equivalent of the or operator is basically going to be a union. It's not gonna be an intersection, okay? It's gonna fetch both. It's gonna try to fetch the rows that match either of those conditions, okay? So if I apply um, in our query, if I apply or um, I forgot what was that rooms dot club ID is null. Okay, rooms dot club ID is null. Now this will give me that room as well. In addition to these seven rows, I'm gonna see one more room. So we're gonna see eight rows, right? So yeah, so we have covered one more query. Um, now, I guess it's already, 8, 12, it's been an hour. So we'll stop right here, okay? Um, and do check out these resources if you have any doubts, okay? I'm gonna share one more resource which actually really helped me in understanding my uh, knowledge on PostgreSQL joins. So you can check out this resource. It's called launchschool.com um, books slash SQL first edition. Uh, it's a really nice resource and I actually use this resource uh, when I first started to develop this application myself. So they go over all the concepts that we discussed earlier in much good detail, entity relationship diagram, um, one to many relationships, one to one relationships, all of that is covered over here. And you're also gonna see examples of inner join, left join, cross join, outer join, all of that, okay, uh, Egen's blog, that is on medium.com slash Egen, okay? You can check out this as well, and your, you will find most of the queries are covered already in this particular blog post. Um, so go over them. Uh, the key point is uh, practice actually will help you solidify this understanding of concepts better. Okay, so do take the homework lessons seriously. I'm gonna leave some homework lessons on um, uh, over here in the discussions tab. Okay, I'm also gonna make a post on Discord. So uh, spaced memory, spaced repetition is actually key in retaining these concepts in memory and recalling them whenever you want, okay? The next session, what we will do is will actually build a web service, okay? So all of the queries that we wrote so far, uh, it's only useful when you build a service on top of it, right? So we are gonna go over Node.js um, and see how to you know, integrate these queries in a Node.js based application. And we'll write uh, a RESTful web service that actually runs these queries that we spoke about uh, in the last three sessions and actually exposes them via an API, okay? So once we build this API, then we can go about constructing this uh, user interface over here, right? For our front end, we'll consume this API and use the data to display all this information in the UI. So we are going to cover web servers in the next lesson, and then we will go to developing the front end piece, okay? So let me know if you have any feedback at any time, um, and I'll try to address it. Um, and if you have any doubts over some concept that I just covered, you can ask me that as well.
Okay. All right. Have a great weekend. Yes, uh, Kabir is asking, I have an issue in installing Docker. Can I reach out to you? Sure, you can reach out to me. Cool. Thank you, everyone. And I'll see you in the next session. Bye.